Hi, my name is Mary and welcome to Optical Low Vision Aids Part 2. In this lectorial, I'm going to take you through um, how to actually prescribe a magnifying glass for your patient. And then um, once we've covered the theoretical components, I'm actually going to run you through some of the um, typical magnifiers that are available for people. And I've got a whole box of them here. I'm just going to pick that up to show you. Hopefully you can see those there. So um, I'm going to take you through all of these and explain what they do and, and how they work and what's good for what situation. So uh, let's have a look at the um, lecture material first. I'm just going to change the screen here and go to this one. Okay. So in terms of evaluating your patient, the step, step one is to define um, the goal tasks and the performance requirements. What is it that the patient needs to do? You then perform an environmental and task analysis, find out how well they're doing things that they can currently do, and also evaluate non-visual factors. And I'll talk a little bit more about non-visual factors in a moment. Step two and beyond uh, include evaluating the visual factors, how well they're able to read near print, make a recommendation for the device, that is the low vision aid, grade the task, that means make them use it and work out what print size they can actually read with it. And then instruct in a natural context. So don't just get them to read your, um, your vision chart that you provide, but get them to try the magnifying glass with the things that they want to be able to read, whether it's packet labels on food or a newspaper or their bills or something like that. So that's instructing in a natural context. All right, some tips before prescribing a magnifying glass. I alluded to this in the previous lectorial. There's a relationship between the times, or how many times or how many strength times magnifier is with the diopter. So we call that a diopter times relationship. So um, as I said before, approximately four diopters is one times magnification. So sorry, I'll just go to the previous one. So as you can see there, 12.5 times magnification equals 50 diopters. So it's a 4 to 1 ratio. Okay, so how do we actually determine what strength magnifying glass our patient needs? Well, first of all, we need to assess what their print size is using something like the Bailey Lovey word reading card that's shown here. So you'll see, I really like to use the Bailey Lovey word reading card because of the fact that it goes up to N80 print and then all the way down to about N3 or so uh, and everything in between. A lot of the um, other word reading cards only go up to about N16, which is here, is sort of um, three quarters of the way down, harness membership yank, but um, lace bridegroom at the top, that's N80 print, and for a low vision patient, that's ideal. Okay, so how do we determine strength of a magnifier that your patient needs? So let, I'll give you the example here. If your patient can read N48 print with their reading glasses on, and they want to be able to read newspaper print, that is somewhere around N10 or N8 zone, the calculation that you need to prescribe is the print that they're able to read over the print that they want to read. So print read divided by print wanting to read. So for this calculation, the print read is N48 divided by 10, which is the size of the print that they want to read, gives us 4.8 times magnification. Now, you'll come to understand magnifiers, but there is no 4.8 exactly. What there is, is they usually start at about 1.5 times, move on to 2 times, 3 times, 3.5, 4 times, 5 times, and so on. So when it's when the calculation, I'll just go back to the previous screen, when the calculation comes out at 4.8 times magnification, you should start with a 5 times magnifier. Now on the next screen you'll see there um, are other things that you need to consider. And the first thing is acuity reserve. 
Um, in the readings, you'll find out more about acuity reserve, but basically that's a little bit of extra magnification in the event of fluctuating uh, vision, and so you should allow for that in your calculation. So with the previous calculation, we said the patient needs five times magnifier, but on days when their vision is particularly bad, say, um, and, and fluctuates in a negative way, they might need a little bit more. So you might suggest uh, six times magnification instead of the five times. The five times is kind of the lower threshold. The other thing you should consider are environmental factors. So um, what, what situation are they reading in? Do they read in an armchair? Do they read at a table? Um, is the magnifier for use in, at the shops? Uh, how, what's the environment that this person is going to be using this magnifier in? And you'll need to make recommendations based on that. Also personal factors. Not just personality, but other things like um, their, their cognitive ability, um, their physical ability, do they have arthritis in their hands and they're not able to actually hold a magnifying glass up correctly, do they have a tremor in which case um, you know holding a magnifier is going to be shaky and that's going to impact on the vision. So consider your patient as a whole. And the other thing that's often under considered is contrast sensitivity. Um, and, and undermeasured. So you should measure in, in low vision uh, consultation, you should measure the patient's contrast sensitivity. If their contrast is low, it means that you're going to need to make adjustments by including uh, extra illumination for that patient. And I'll show you some magnifiers with, um, with illumination included in them. And of course, I've got a picture here of Mr. Percy Fredericks, who's 92, and he is the patient that you're actually going to be considering as part of the case study for this section. And when you go and do the practical component um, with the advanced optical aids, you'll need to come up with a few suggestions for Mr. Mr. Fredericks based on, on his requirements. So the last slide is using magnifiers just as a general rule. Um, patients should sit in a good light, window with your back uh, to the light is best. An artificial lamp can be effective and as you can see in the image here, the way that the patient is holding the magnifier and the book, she's got it uh, at, at some distance away, but the light is actually shining between the magnifier and the book rather than shining um, over her shoulder or from behind her. If it's shone from behind her, it'll shine right through that glass of the magnifier and um, there'll be a lot of reflections back into her eyes. So uh, the light needs to be directed on the thing that she wants to be able to see. In this case, it's the book. Patients should be very aware of their posture. I'll show you, um, when I show you the magnifiers in a moment, I'll show you what posture, uh, how much of a difference posture can make. But make sure they're sitting up straight because if they're not, that's going to really um, affect how long they can read for. If they need to prop that book up um, and they can't hold on to it for whatever reason for long periods of time, just putting a pillow on their lap or um, placing a telephone book under the, under the book that they're trying to read on a desk could be helpful in moving that, um, that print closer to their eyes. All right, I'm going to come back to me now. Okay, here I am. All right, so I'm going to run through some of those um, typical magnifiers that you can use with your patients and we'll talk about what's good in, in what context. So I'm just going to reach over and here I've got the Bailey Lovey word reading card. And I'll start with something very simple. I'll start with a handheld magnifier. Okay, this one here, this is a three times head magnifier. The reason I know it's three times, it's kind of hard to see here, but there's the number three just there. And it, so it, it tells me um, what times magnification. And also I know it's not very strong because it's actually got quite a wide field of view. And the way that you use that, now remember I said to you in the previous class, if you forget how to use um, or how to calculate the working distance, you should simply hold up the print, place the magnifier flat on the page like that, and then bring it towards you until it comes into focus. And you'll see that that's about the, the working distance. So this is how hand magnifiers work. And of course, you have to move the magnifier over the page. 
Now, the problem with hand magnifiers is that if the patient has a tremor or they have um, arthritis or something like that and they can't actually hold up the magnifier very well, it's going to be a bit difficult. Um, so imagine someone with a tremor trying to read with that, you know, I'm just trying to demonstrate a tremor for you here. It's not, they're not going to do very well. So they need an alternative. So this is a three times hand magnifier. And the other one that I have that's similar is the six times. And you can see the difference in um, the field of view between the two magnifiers. So of course, the six times is going to have to be held a lot closer to the page. And that's about that distance there. And of course, you're also going to have um, a very reduced field of view. And I showed you that in the previous lectorial. So they're the hand magnifiers. Now, you would have noticed they don't have any light in them at all. Um, so you need light from an external light source. If your patient hasn't got enough light uh, in the room or they haven't got a reading lamp to use with that, you can use a handheld magnifier with light included. And I'll get one out here. Okay. So here's the hand magnifier and it's got a, a light in it. And you turn that light on by pushing that button up and you can see that the light just there is turned on. I'll just turn it off so you can see the comparison. There we go. And that's essentially used in the same way. Now, this thing that's hanging off here, that's just a dust um, you know, protector, protects the magnifier. Um, these are really great because you can, patients can pop these in their bag and take them shopping and, and so on and they're actually um, protected um, from scratches. So you just use it in the same way. You open the open the flap, turn it on, grab your reading material and then um, work out your working distance by putting it flat on the page and lifting it towards you and off you go to start reading. Now that's probably actually a bit far. This is a five times magnifier. So what I would do is I'd bring that closer to my eyes so that I've got a better a better field of view. And don't forget, if I'm presbyopic, you need to prescribe um, reading glasses or you need to ensure that the patient uses, uses their reading glasses. So they're the different types of hand magnifiers. So illuminated compared to non illuminated um, hand magnifiers. Now we'll move on to stand magnifiers. Stand magnifiers are really great when the patient has a tremor. So I'm just getting that out for you. Okay. There's the stand magnifier head and there's the stand magnifier handle. Now as you can see here, the focal distance is fixed already for you. So you simply get the reading material, get the patient to put the stand magnifier on the page like that. Now if you look through there, you're actually not going to be able to see anything at all because there's not enough light. So that's what the handle is for. It just joins up like that. And I'll just take it apart for a sec. If I turn it on, it's got some LED lights in there. That's off, that's on. And you just turn it on and off with that lever at the front. So pop it in there, turn it on, and now you can put it flat on the page. And actually, that's not bad. You can see through there. Um, I'll just turn it off and you can see what difference it is. It's quite dark in there. So that's on. And so how the patient would use that is I tell them to put the hand out as if they're getting a smack, put the reading material on top like that, put the magnifier on top of their hand, tilt it towards them, bring it right up to their eyes and just make sure there's firmness between the hand and the magnifying glass. And that's simple. So. If um, they have a tremor and they're shaking away, it's not going to affect it as much as, as if they had a hand magnifier and they actually had to um, work out the focal distance. And of course, when they're not using it, they just turn it off. So you can get all different strengths. This is a four times, you can see there. But you can also have a stronger one. I'll show you a stronger one. This one is a six times and it works in the same way. So the beauty of these is that the patient can just get the handle and then they can replace the head and interchange the head for different tasks or if their um, vision is variable or if um, their vision starts to 
decrease over time as well. So you can get battery powered handles. You open the end and you can see the batteries fall out there. Or put it back in. Oops. You can get an electric handle which is plugged into the electricity. You can see that big bright globe there. Um, the advantage of this is that the electric handle gives you much brighter light and then of course the head just fits on like that okay. and plugs into the um, an electrical socket. The disadvantage obviously when you have to plug it into the um, electricity is that it's not as portable as the other one is. Okay, so that's um, hand magnifiers and stand magnifiers. Um, there's also a couple of other different little magnifiers that are useful. These little pocket ones are great for um, taking shopping. They're three and a half times and they come in a little leather pouch and you pull them out like that and they, um, they're not encased so they actually capture quite a lot of light and you can see really well um, with them if you're going out shopping. Yeah, if you can see that. There you go. So they're good for prices and again because they're in the leather pouch they're quite protected. All right, um, high strength, high strength magnifying glasses. These are really good for patients um, who who need to be hands free for whatever reason. We get a lot of patients that need to do woodwork or that um, might do um, some sort of craft work and they need to be hands free. Okay, so at the risk of looking very daggy, I'm going to put these on. You can see them here. They're prism glasses. And um, um, there's prisms in them to help you converge, and they're probably about uh, four times magnification or so, I think. All right, put them on. Okay, I can see nothing at this point. Now, with these, they um, the best you know, you're going to have to focus, get the patient to focus, probably by bringing the print material really, really close to them like that and then just move out until it comes into focus. And that's about that distance there for me, so not only about four or five centimetres. Um, and so as you can see there, if I can be hands-free to hold up things and to do craft work and so on, but the disadvantage is that I have to hold things very, very close and it's a little bit uncomfortable. So all the magnifiers have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, you've just got to find the right thing um, for your patient. And there's one more to show you. This is a distance low vision aid, and they're call, called Max TV glasses. I'll just open the packet. And these are really great for watching TV, and they'll magnify two times, but in the distance. They look quite space age, as you can see there. And on the side, let's see if I can turn that, you can see there's a little rotating wheel there. And see what happens when I rotate that wheel? That lens moves backwards and forwards. That's your focusing wheel for long distance. So again, I'm going to look really daggy and I'm going to put these on. So remember, these are for watching television. They're no good for near. Here we go. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is turn towards my television. I'm just going to turn sideways. Hopefully you can still see me. Yeah. And you'll see there, what I need to do is I'll close my left eye and I'll move that turning wheel and looking in the distance until it comes into focus. So it, it um, accommodates for a little bit of refractive error there. And then I do the same thing, close the right eye and focus the left one. And off I go. Everything's magnified about two, two times or so, but for the distance. Okay, in the advanced optical aids prac, you're all going to get a chance to actually have a look, a feel, and try all this stuff on, uh, try it out, read um, with these magnifiers, and consider um, what you'd prescribe in different circumstances. And this is this lectorial was just designed as a as a rough overview and introduction to um, how to prescribe low vision aids. Don't forget to let me know if you have any questions by posting uh, your questions and comments on the discussion board in the LMS site. Okay, good luck.